Hi friends! Today we are diving into Sonya Ji's Kiaki set version 2 that released this week actually. I had wanted to film this video before the drop but unfortunately my schedule just did not allow it. I decided to still film with these brushes because as you know I love to speak about Sonya G brushes and go into the details making comparisons with her other collections and as you know I adore the first Kiaki set that released last year in December. Was it last? No. It was two years ago. December 2020 is when Sonia released her first Kiyaki set. We were excited because this was the first short handle travel set that she released and to find out we were going to have another. Well, excitement. And if it's your first time hearing about Sonia G, if it's your first time clicking on one of my videos, Hi, I'm Alicia, an online coach who specializes in flexibility, body weight training, just helping people build the foundation for sound movement and nutrition habits that will last them and not make them sad. And I also love to talk about Sonya G brushes. And today we'll go into the Kiaki set. Of course, as with any Sonya G video I film, I would highly recommend that you visit her blog, SweetMakeupTemptations.com. Every time she releases a new collection, a new brush, she goes into in-depth detail about the manufacturing, the craftsmanship, the reasons behind why she came out with said brush or collection, making comparisons with her other brushes. So. It just gives you a better understanding of why she created what she did. And of course, when Sonia describes the brushes, their functionality, their purpose, their design, it's like you are there with her and brush in hand experiencing these points that she outlays. And of course, I can't do any of it justice, but I attempt to. <laughs> So let's try. This was exciting because once I saw that this Kiyaki set was coming out with a short handle jumbo base, oh my gosh. And we'll make comparisons with the set that released in 2020, but just some details about the handles. This wood is premium high grade wood. The handles are the same length from the previous collection and this wood is called Kiaki Zelkova Serata. Native to Japan, high grade, used for temples, shrines, expensive and it takes a longer drying time so the process required to create these handles is actually quite expensive. So if you see the price and yes I haven't mentioned the price yet, my apologies. The entire set retails for $160 currently available on Beautylish still is as I'm looking at the product page at the moment. Limited edition! So if you want this set and if you're like, wait guys, see Elise's video, listen, if you already know you're gonna love it, just get it, okay? Because I'm not entirely sure if she'll bring back these brushes specifically. And yes, they're only available as a set as was the previous one released in 2020. So if you wanted the individuals, I know we like the individuals, but this is meant to be sold and used as a collection, a travel brush set. Sonia's intentions behind creating a version 2 Kiyaki set was to design versatile workhorse brushes because if these are ones that you'll travel with, and I went over these points in my travel makeup bag videos, that you want to pack brushes that can do more than one task, more than two, I would say, for the face and the eyes that are fluid in terms of what mediums you can use them with, to have a towel nearby where you can wipe and go to the next makeup item and get your face done quickly. That is the point behind the Kiyaki set. So she ensured with these brushes that you can use them with a lot of different makeup items for different tasks on your face. And we have two eye brushes, two face brushes, and one that you could use for either depending. Here they are close up. I mean, oh my goodness, let me let me hold them better. And just look at this exquisite wood, beautifully crafted. The color is just this rich, almost reddish brown tone, and you can see the exposed wood and just the beautiful texture this type presents. You have the brushed black ferrule here that just makes the overall design look beautifully sophisticated and elegant, but there's like an earthiness about it, very much holds that traditional vibe when it comes to Japanese wood and the high level of craftsmanship that's required to 
actually use it. The jumbo bass released in Sonia's Fusion said that everyone lost their minds over. So here is the size difference, but the brush head size is actually the same. A note about the fibers. Now, one might think, wow, you have synthetic fibers in here. Why is it still so expensive? The synthetic fibers that the Japanese use are high grade. They're not just some like willy nilly synthetic whatever, okay? In addition, these synthetic fibers are mixed with Sokoho goat hair. So believe it or not, it's actually quite time consuming to combine both Sokoho goat hair and synthetic fibers and to bundle them in a way that leaves behind the perfect ratio of pickup and glide to create this slant with the medium density. So you actually need high level skill to bundle these fibers together. And one might think, well, how come it's still expensive? It's because of the work that's required to bundle these different types of filaments with, again, different densities, lengths, and circumference diameters to make it so you have, again, the perfect type of a brush that delivers that lay down for foundation, whether it be cream or liquid or even powder, to have this specific design. And just look at that density. It feels plush against the skin. And compared to the mini Kiyaki set from 2020, this is the mini base. And I'm sure one of the critiques was like, listen, I love the mini base. I love it. But it might take a little bit to get the foundation buff into the skin. This is a round ferrule. You see the jumbo base is a crimped one. You just get more surface area per pounds from the jumbo base brush where the mini base, yes, you could use it for both foundation, for under the eye, concealing, but if you're waiting for that short handle, bigger brush head foundation, brush to get your color on quickly. Not only foundation, but cream bronzer, cream blush, just fast. I actually took this along with me when dog sitting and I use this for my foundation, my cream bronzer, my cream blush, a lot of tasks for my complexion step. I'm just thrilled that we have now a short handle brush, which even though significantly bigger than the mini base, I still feel moderate in size that you can again, can cover many tasks with. And we're gonna get into the demos. We're just going into the details first. So the timestamps, as you see, right here on the time bar. Next up, we have the soft face. This is undyed Psychoho goat hair, a very soft natural bristle. You can see that we have a round ferrule and a flat top. This is particularly wispy and airy, but it's not super floppy, so on your right. No, you cannot use this with cream. Although it is undyed, the bristles are thin and a little too delicate to use with cream and liquid products, so make sure you only use use this brush for powder. And compared to the classic face, the classic face, you have a mixture, soft face, you just have the Psycho Goat. And with the classic face, you have the flat ferrule or more so crimped on both sides and soft face, you have the round. So this hits more surface area at once, whereas this is more of like a round placement of color. And I would say the soft face has a little bit more strength than the classic. Classic is a little more wispy in nature, fantastic brush still for bronzer, highlights, I would even argue for, and under the eye placement for press or loose powder. But I do love a round brush. I tend to gravitate towards those designs because I feel ideal for buffing product, for placing product right here into the hollows as I feel it fits well into the hollows here. And buffing around for cheek products, I think perfect with a round brush. Ooh, next up, we got a favorite, the Jumbo Worker. This is the same Sokoho Goat and Synthetic Blend as you saw from the Jumbo Base. It's dense, but flexible and it adapts well. And I immediately thought, oh yes, concealing. Also around the nose and great for that. Listen, if you are a cream lid eye product person, this wide enough to get that on the lids quickly. You could eat, you know, you could try for the lower lash line. Just be careful. 
just be careful if you're not one to use a lot of powder you can dab it here under the eyes you could also place some highlighter here on the cheekbones down the bridge of your nose and this is your precision brush right because now you got the jumbo base for those big sweeping applications of color now the jumbo worker you have the precision brush for uh, more concentrated blemish covering here like I have on the jaw again around the nose on the eyes wherever you want to place a little more coverage or perhaps you're one to paint on your contour but not sure you'll bring along that type of a makeup while on the go but if you're using this at home maybe you have a palette and you like the jumbo worker to place your contour on and then you'll reach for another brush to blend it out possibilities are endless next we have our crease brush this is brown dyed psycho goat hair primarily used with powders because it is dyed airy but dense there's really nice fluidity here and fantastic i think an all-around shape for many eye sizes if you have small eyes I think still small enough to get into the crease successfully if you have bigger eyes then maybe nice for precise work beautifully ideal for outer corner you could place the color there and use the tip of the brush to then blend that shade through the crease you could place some here on the outer quarter of the lower lash line but you can see there's fluffiness but great feedback some strength there fantastic pickup for a number of different powder textures whether you wanted to go with metallic shimmer satin or matte and like all sonia's crease brushes beautifully beautifully smooth a few comparisons here here is the blender pro blender pro uh, a little bigger than the kiyaki crease we have here the classic crease classic crease uh, I think this one, I think Sonia said the classic crease has a little more of a point. I forgot which one she said had a little more of a point. She does make that distinction on her blog. And we have the mini booster here from the Sky set a lot smaller. And pulling from the Kiyaki set from 2020, this is the mini booster as well, but it is undyed goat hair. You can see a lot smaller than this year's Kiyaki set. So if you were to bring both sets together, you have this one for more comprehensive blending and the mini booster for precise placement of color, whether you wanted to dab it here on the outer part of the lid or take it all away across your lower lash line, maybe apply some color here on the inner corner. And last Lastly, we have the detail. This is a fusion mix. Again, the Sokoho Goat with synthetic fibers. You could use this with powders and creams. It is an all-rounder, whatever you want to use it for brush. A soft but firm tip. So it comes to a nice point, but there's great density, however, very smooth at the same time. So for those who didn't who would never subscribe to like the wash of concealer under the eyes. If you're one to just use a small brush for very much precise work here on the very inner under part of your eye, you can use that brush with a concealer or you could take it around the nose if you needed some cleanup around the lip here or even placement of color on the outer lid more concentrated than you would get from the crease brush. You could even wisp some shadow here across the lash line which i wanted to compare quickly to the mini booster so here is the detail brush against the mini booster but from the first kiyaki set we have the flat definer so the flat definer will be a more appropriate choice to smoke out liner with because you see it's thinner it's flatter the detail brush i think great if you just wanted a little more coloring on the lash line not as precise as you would get from using the mini booster let's say you know my favorite permagel liner from pat mcgrath black coffee i like to place that on the lash line and I would use the flat definer to make that a little longer here, maybe wing it out slightly. But the detail one probably will use 
a, a darker shadow and have it a little more smoky here on the outer corner of the lash line. Perfect for brow bone highlight or perhaps placing some concealer here under the brow bone. Perfect for inner corner highlight. So when we get into the demos, I'm just thrilled to use this brush with different types of makeup and maybe go out the norm of my current routine. For instance, I have the Syrah Perfectionist Concealer Palette on standby because this will be a type of brush to do like the pinpoint work. You know that I felt a technique lost with this full coverage, whatever, whatever, like in terms of makeup artistry and the professional sector, I feel relies on this technique still where they use a creamier concealer product and a smaller brush to pinpoint those blemishes or what have you for evening out and not just like covering up with a ton of foundation. So we're gonna practice that in a demo. And let me briefly mention the Jumbo Blender. So in this current collection, we don't have one like a fluffy dense shader like we have in the first Kiyaki set. We do have the Jumbo Worker. So these are the size comparisons. You can see Jumbo Worker is significantly bigger than the Jumbo Blender, yes different tasks. You'll probably have to think outside of the box in terms of just finding different products to use the Jumbo Worker with or maybe adjusting your technique a little bit. But ultimately, I think Sonia created the second Kiyaki set to be used with the first one. So for instance, I have one of Sonia's makeup bags here. I could just put all the brushes right here in these elastic loops, okay? And I'll use one of her towels to create a barrier, place it on the brushes because the brush handle length is absolutely perfect. And I could just put all of them right here. First and second Kiyaki set successfully in this bag. And I have plenty of space to put my makeup in the main compartment. So yeah, I'm excited. With details out the way, I think it's time for you to come in a little closer. That's enough. Let's begin with the beloved jumbo base. What what do I got here? Hold on. Got my makeup bag packed up. So yes, I use this uh, style instead because uh, the last few days have been incredibly hot and I thought it would have been better for me to apply powder products. And although I can take out the grid component from my Daphne Dover Mila toiletry bag, I just left it as is because I'm sure I'll revisit that when returning to cream products, stick kind. So I thought I would use my units, but for this demo, going to apply my NARS, which is getting a little messy. So I'll actually use my Jumbo Worker to paint some concealer from the nozzle. Cause you know, this is good, this is expensive makeup. You gotta pick it up. I also have a little bit here in the cap. So I'm picking some of that up. You remember what I was saying about painting on makeup that maybe you wouldn't actually do that on the road, but look at us now. We found, we found something to do that with. What can I say about the Jumbo Base? I gushed over it when it released in the Fusion set, and this is just an incredible brush. As you see, has the perfect amount of density. I feel lovely for liquid foundation. Sonia wrote that the natural fibers kind of take off excess makeup, so what's left behind is a natural finish, but the synthetic fibers deliver that smooth glide across the skin. And again, to get that perfect combination of synthetic and Sokoho goat to yield that just divine result takes work, okay? Takes some high level handling. Sonia also mentioned if in a pinch, like what if you forgot your jumbo base? You technically could use the jumbo worker. It might take you a little bit, Absolutely, but if you're in a jam and you're like, listen, I just need to slap something on real quick, the brush head, yes, not huge, especially if we compare it to the mini base, you get a lot more surface area contact from mini base, absolutely. But because it's flat here, 
you could just do a fast whip around you know i think for those moments perhaps where you rely on concealer for your complexion needs that day you just dot it around and just get it on super fast or you know what you could just use your fingers just make sure you wash your hands going into concealer now both types so let's go in with my lys concealer i will dot a little bit here under the eye so gonna do one of those but i will also like to show you what the detail can do but because the detail is a lot smaller i think we will have to just use less concealer so here's the jumbo worker and as suspected perfectly ideal for concealer the flat surface area makes it easy to spread the product perfectly and you have the tip of the brush to further buff and fluff the edges of the concealer as it spreads down and out and this blend is just incredibly soft on the skin if you have particularly sensitive under eye areas here under the lash line you can still pounce the brush successfully without it feeling stabby now if you're one to just use a little bit of concealer then the detail brush will just blend enough here on the inner inner part of the under eye right so if this is your route I think fantastic to use this brush for this specific task great if you wanted a little more of let's say precision work so actually I was watching is video and she had demonstrated applying concealer here on the outer part of your under eye in an upward fashion so that you can actually create more of a lifting effect yeah and i think because of the smaller brush head size you can totally accomplish that successfully and here look at this perfect for around the nostrils you know that could get a little funny it's a really tough spot to to cover now with my syrup palette so you see here i got i got these great looking blemishes fantastic little brush now to just pinpoint carefully where I need a little more coverage. Ooh, I might have to use another color. You know, if you're not one to just use concealer, like a glob of concealer all over, then you could use your cream. I'm dabbing a touch of the LYS on the back of my hand. In the similar fashion, I'll take with my detail brush, and here, I'll just kind of spot treat what needs more coverage, and the smaller brush allows for that to happen without having to overload the skin with makeup, right? If it's just a matter of covering these few spots, then it's not necessary to apply a bunch of product. And again, the brush is small enough so that you can just keep the makeup where you want it to go for these smaller BBs. Fantastic, done. Finished. For Pauja, you technically can use your jumbo worker. Just make sure you have a towel on hand to release uh, any liquid or cream you decided to use with the brush, right? Because you don't want to get a heavy dose of makeup when you got a little, you know, cream residue on the bristles and you're going with the powder. So here with Linda's blotting powder, I just picked up some and you can dab I think well under the eyes and that looks great if you wanted to use the soft face although round you still could get it here under the eyes it's soft it doesn't feel spikely spikely what word is that it doesn't feel stabby here under the eyes and because it's round pretty well adaptable with you know in terms of the different contours of your face and furthermore beautifully perfect to get a little more powder here on the face if you wanted and as i mentioned i was using powders for my shoot yesterday going in with house labs with bronzer soft face of course have to get this bronzer oh boy soft face is lovely has the right amount of density and pickup but very much adaptable with several types of medium. So this is like a gel to powder. I have the Surratt on standby. This is more of like a, an air whipped texture. If I wanted to use this instead, again, the Undye Sokoho Goat can work well with several types of powders. And the glide on the skin 
is superb. The perfect ratio of airiness, flexibility, but strength exists in the soft face. I love a brush that has a little more feedback, but is still soft. That's a winner. Getting the draw, getting the draw. Okay, okay, face is coming together. Thank goodness for Sonia. What else can we use this for? I also have Paradise Glow on standby. Of course, we'll use the soft face as well with this product. I can't ask for anything better. This brush is brilliant. It reminds me of the Sky Set Soft Cheek. So although this has a shorter bristle, they're both round and I guess I just love me a round cheek brush. I have the classic cheek from the Sky Set except this is uh, crimped on both sides. It's not round like the soft face. I don't know, I, this is more like a striking type of a brush. You could go with the swirl and twirl, but the swirl and twirl capability from the soft face, unparalleled. Here we go, let's do it. And let me briefly compare that with the classic face from Kiyaki One, right? Classic face is a lot more wispy. It doesn't feel as dense. They're both soft, but if you want a more, just a tiny bit, aggressive of a pickup or you wish this had more pickup then it exists in the soft face if you want more of a wispy dosing of color then classic face will be perfect but i love that i have both now because you know depending on the route i want to go if i wanted a little more color or maybe just left of an aggressive buff you, you know i i have the choice now because i have the tools i can't stop using the soft face around the nose, why not? Just If you're wondering about highlighter, well, we can try that out with both the Jumbo Worker and the Soft Face. I actually have my Phytal Surgeon's Spectral Shine and Dew of Dawn standby, and I'll use Jumbo Worker to pick up the product and place it here on the cheekbones. And I love the brush's size because now, I can really pinpoint where I want Spectral Shine to go. And picking up this more like yellow situation here with still the Jumbo Worker. Is this Halo? I think this, I forgot the name of the blush, I'm sorry. Beautiful color. Oh my goodness, I I forgot how beautiful this, this shade is. I guess I put it on this side just to be even. Jumbo Worker, you would think because it's a little more dense and not as wispy as let's say, because people love to use a teardrop type of a brush for highlight, like as an example, because of the tapered side, it feels easy to just pinpoint where the product should go on the cheekbones. But this is flat and small, and I think foolproof in terms of feeling where highlighter should go but it's not so dense that when you apply the product it just kind of plops down and sits no it still has great blending capability so it could spread evenly and because it's small you could bring it to your brow arch without disrupting your brow work Yes. Wow, I'm so, I'm so happy. Every time I work with Sony G brushes, the new ones, it's just magnificent. Thank you, Sonia. Now with the eye brushes. If we just wanted to stick to what we have in this set specifically, we have the crease and we have the detail. And you're like, oh my gosh, I don't have a shader. You know, we could use our fingers to apply the main stage shade. And I understand if that might not be your go-to route. So if you have the previous set, then you could use the jumbo blender. If you wanted that lay down, capability from a brush. I would say though, you could pack any of her, her shader brushes that she has from her collection. It might not have the same handle length, but this is her Builder Pro, so perfect to bring along. If you wanted to stick to the short handle category, this is a Koyuto brush from their Premium series, and it's like a similar length to the Kiyaki set is actually shorter. So if you wanted to bring that along for the ride, just tag it along. There you got, you got your shader brush. There are a bunch of short handle shader brushes in the Fuday world. So 
that that's another route you can go if you wanted the shader brush. Going into Ismea's Industrial Eyeshadow Pigment Palette. I thought it'd be fun to go with Cuprum. I haven't yet filmed like a, another video besides the initial one. So, you know, whatever opportunity I have to showcase more combinations using the industrial palette, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it. So you can see here that I applied the majority of the shade through the crease and then I picked up the shadow on one side of the brush to bring it across my lid. But the just fluidity and still fantastic pickup from the crease brush blows me away. It is insane as to how smooth this brush is, how soft, but how strong it is. Like it's still gonna blend that color like no other and still have that beautiful blur on the edge of the shadow. And again, the size is perfect, I think, to work with several eye shapes and types. Even if you have a small eye, small hooded lids, you can still use this brush to just kind of finish any shadow you apply in your crease. Just take it lightly here on the edges and it's just a lovely finish. And just taking my finger, although Sonia did mention that you could use the detail brush to bring a little more color on the lid. Now, if you have a smaller lid space, this might work. If you're like, Alicia, I got a lot of lid space. Then again, pack the shader or use your finger. I will use my detail brush, however, to place this color under the lash line. And again, as you saw, perfect. Returning to the crease brush to finish the edges of this shadow. This is such a fun shadow. It has like a brassy brown base with gold flecks. Mm. And now on this side, yes, I could have done two different eyes, but I'm a little bit of a, t just a tiny bit of a time crunch. You know, I like to go wild and show you all the combinations, but sometimes I just have to be a little more practical. Thank you so much for understanding. And you could use the crease brush to finish any application of color you applied on the lower lash line. And oof, this is, relax, relax, Alicia. <laughs> I'll still use the detail brush to invite another color I believe this is heat and it's a duochrome that I feel will look lovely here on the inner lower lash line. And because there's a beautiful point on the detail brush, you can just place the color there without it spreading too far. And why not? Let's use a little bit of brass on the inner part of the lid to invite another color, not to be the inner corner highlight, but just to create like a, a really nice gradient here. Perfect if you love to invite a different color on the inner lid. Again, not necessarily the inner corner, right? The brush is small enough to keep the color right here under the arc so it can still look neat. And now for the actual inner inner corner, I mean, we can do sweat, which is like the lavender flip, or we can stick to heat. We could do flesh. You know what? I really like heat a lot. That line flip when placed on top of everything else because it's a little bit translucent. So the undercolor shows through still and it won't look muddy. And look, we got our jumbo worker. If you needed to clean up anything, Flick, flick, flick. Now to use detail with one of these putty shades. Again, this is multi-purpose. You can use it with several types of mediums. And I thought, why not? Let's try to use leather here in a way that's going to just bring a little bit more of that intensity here on the outer lash line. So it won't be as precise as the flat definer but if you want a little bit more of like a prominent smoke, something that's going to appear bolder and not as small, right? Keeping it tight to the lash line. So you could use this brush for that purpose. So I wanted it to appear more black here on the outer part of the lid, but the brush is still small enough to keep the color pretty compact. And you know what, if you have the flat definer, just go in and do what you need to do because ultimately 
I will just pack both sets. I will bring both sets along, 100%. How perfect is this application? Can I ask for anything more? All right, I'm gonna apply some mascara and I'll be right back. And here are some close-up shots of the final look so you can see the texture of the products and how immaculate these tools are. I think, listen, if you love short handles, if you want that brush set that covers all the nooks and crannies of your routine, has been intelligently designed, does the thinking for you because Sonia is a freaking genius, then just you just get it. Limited edition, don't know if Sonia will change her mind down the road, but I just think these designs are so special and they nail it in terms of the products they can be used with the application, several techniques you can utilize. And yes, although I understand the shapes might not be for everyone in terms of we love the way we apply makeup and use certain products. So maybe you like the mini base over the jumbo base. Maybe you prefer the jumbo blender over the crease brush or the detail brush. I still think you can get away with a completely beautiful look using Kiyaki set version two. But listen, if you have Kiyaki set version one and have two or are about to order two, listen, your travel makeup brush life, complete. I know for myself, I'm going to Bay's house later. I'm packing all the Kiyaki brushes as well as the makeup items and want to fully immerse myself into the Kiyaki experience just using those brushes and again, diversifying the different products I bring along, whether they be powder or cream. Again, I could use these brushes with several types of makeup items because there's just a great balance between the Sokoho Goat and Synthetic Mix, the Psycho Undyed Dyed. It just checks off all the boxes for expectations, different shapes, and I I think it also challenges the user perhaps to maybe approach or use a different makeup technique, perhaps shift and pivot a little bit. So you could just discover more about yourself, your makeup, perhaps you can learn a new technique using these brushes. And I think that's exciting where we can just widen our experience, our perspective, and how great our makeup application can be. And my apologies for not mentioning this in the beginning. I will probably have made a notation about it, but these were sent to me. A huge thank you to Sonia and the Beautylish team for doing so. I would have bought it anyway because some things you just can't pass up. And when it comes to Sonia G brushes, especially the Kiyaki set or any short handle designs she decides to release here on after, I'm there for it. I'll see you at checkout. Let me know, fam, if you picked up this set, if you're thinking about it, if you're passing on it, I'll see you down in the comment section with your thoughts. And until then, fam, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial, Sonia G brush extravaganza or monthly pays. Take care and I will see you again soon.